One in every 54 children has autism, and one third of those are nonverbal. And yet they're still a part of the Joel 228 generation. And you say, well, who's that? In Joel 228, God said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So then is autism one of the enemy's modern day strategies to silence the prophetic voices of the boys and girls in this generation that God has given this special assignment to? Today I'm interviewing Tawny Cullen, the mother of an autistic boy named Josiah, who is over the top prophetic and profound, and though he is nonverbal, he cannot be silenced. He will rock your world. Don't miss this interview. There were times in the middle of the night that I was almost on the floor in the glory of the Lord because what he was sharing was so heavy that I'm just like, is this, what is going on? And it, he would talk about like, there's an angel in the room. Thousands of nonverbal autistic children have shocking heavenly experiences and through the unusual ability to type out their thoughts and feelings on tablets and iPads one finger at a time, they're able to share deep truths they're learning from the Holy Spirit. They talk of visits to heaven where Jesus himself teaches them things. They share deep spiritual truths that they would have no earthly way of knowing except God. They prophesy on adult levels and have wisdom beyond their years, but on the outside, they still look odd and dysfunctional. The world outside of the church doesn't know what to do with those who hear voices, so without God, they're frequently diagnosed and labeled as schizophrenic. But are they? Or are their experiences real? Today I'm talking with Tawny Cullen, the mother of a nonverbal autistic boy named Josiah. And she's going to share some of the spiritual gems that have come from her son over the past seven years, as well as other unassuming autistic children and teens. God is using the most unlikely and humble among us to declare his glory. Tani calls these children the hidden ones, and they're frequently tucked away in their homes, never getting to attend church or traditional schools because of their disabilities and odd, uncontrollable and disruptive behaviors. She wrote a best-selling book a few years ago called Josiah's Fire, and it tells the heartbreaking journey of two parents who had their little baby who was developing beautifully, when all of a sudden he began to deteriorate dramatically. And within two short years, he was diagnosed as severely autistic. The book tells their journey and the struggles they endured until one profound day, when Josiah was about seven and a half, they discovered even though he still could not talk, and in every way, he looked like he was low functioning. He began to reveal hidden treasures within him that he was learning from God. Josiah is now a teenager. And while things don't look too different on the outside, he continues to astound those who know him. Tawny's been interviewed on The Sid Roth Show, Fox and Friends, The 700 Club, Patricia King's program, and many other lesser known programs. But the things you are going to hear in this interview, you won't find in any of the others. I highly encourage you to purchase a copy of Josiah's Fire, which I have linked below. This would be an amazing book for you, but also to read to your own children to inspire faith in them. Be sure to share this video with those who have autistic children, as well as those who are therapists, those who care and teach them, and anyone else in the church world who's involved in children's ministry. There's something in this program for everyone. And this video is all about the hidden Joel 228 generation. Right. Tawny, thank you so much for joining me today. I have been looking forward to this ever since we met, and I think we met on Facebook, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah, it's it's been a number of years ago, and um, I, I can't wait to hear uh, what uh, some updates on Josiah, your son, um, that we've been talking about, and um, I I have been fascinated by him, and I and I just want to give uh, a brief introduction of why that is is because. Um, as, a, as a children's minister, I run into all kinds of people, and a, a number of years ago, I began to encounter parents whose children were autistic, and the things that came out were how sensitive that they were 
in the spirit realm. Um, everything from, I had one woman who had um, contacted our ministry. She was at this time born again in spirit filled, but had a very strong background in the occult. And her child, which uh, six years old at the time, would see and hear things in the spirit world. And I never knew if I was hearing from a, a familiar spirit or if I was hearing from the spirit of God. And then I began to hear, uh, there was, uh, uh, someone tipped me off to this thing of that autistic children hear voices in their heads. And so I started searching the internet on that and I couldn't believe how many of them are. And of course the world just writes them off and says they're crazy. And I knew that there had to be a spiritual component uh, to this. And so I just began to research and I, you came along just just about the right time. And your son, uh, talking about Josiah, and you wrote this book. I found the book. I saw you on Sid Roth. And it just hooked me because of my preconceived idea. And that preconceived idea is because autistic children are so sensory sensitive to light, to sound, to touch, to, to environment, to everything, that I just had this theory that they were also sensitive uh, in the spirit realm as well. And ta-da, Josiah's fire. Now, I don't want to go into the history necessarily of how you discovered that he was autistic, because that could take up the whole show. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I want to do is just encourage, and we're going to link this book below, encourage people to buy your book. And then we, I, I just want, really want to fast forward to when your nonverbal son, who had completely lost the ability to communicate with you through language, all of a sudden found his voice through a typing method. Would you pick up the story there, please, and tell us how this happened and what exactly came out of it? Sure. First of all, Becky, I want to thank you for having me here. And I also want to just show my appreciation to you because when you did contact me, um, you were the first probably minister that actually you were onto something with the autistic population that I had been experiencing, but really couldn't find someone in the church world to come along and say, no, I get it. And for you, uh, you have a, a teaching online and I went and watched that teaching online and you talk about the Joel two generation and you talk about the prophetic voice and all of these things and, and that sensitivity in the spirit. And I, everything in my being of what I knew and understood what was happening with my own son. And as time went along, what I saw happening with others that I didn't know were happening at the time until they reached out to me. Um, it really synced up with, with where God was kind of leading you. And so I really appreciate that you bring us perspective to this that really isn't out there at this time. Praise God. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my son, Josiah, um, he was nonverbal, um, a very severe end of the autistic spectrum, couldn't speak, um, had difficulty communicating. Um, I went and took him to a place that helped children learn to communicate by pointing at letters to spell. And so I learned a method called the rapid prompting method. And it was during that time that I realized that, oh my goodness, he's in there. So this idea changed in me, first of all, that said, presume competence. So you think that you're dealing with a child that has the mind of a two-year-old, and you treat him and talk to him as such. But the reality is, is that many of these children that are autistic are actually intelligently intact. It's just they are locked inside and don't have the language or even um, expression with their skills and their motor ability to even facial expressions and things like that to always show that they're tracking with you. Yeah. So um, to find out that he was in there and that he was answering and responding correctly to things was a game game changer. Also, the lady that um, showed me how to do this method with him, she said something that was very interesting. She said, he's an auditory learner. She said, you need to speak to him and talk to him as if he is blind. Wow. So instead of saying less words, 
talk more, express yourself, talk about, you know, when you're walking on the street, talk about the leaves on the tree and talk about photosynthesis and talk about, you know, just talk more. And it was in that, that, um, because, you know, when you don't get that back, you find yourself not talking, (laughs) you find yourself just not hardly talking. So it's like, you'll fulfill that child's needs and have physical uh, expression, but just, you kind of stop talking. Well, that ignited um, a fire inside of me to, and my husband as well, to like engage with our son um, in a, in a way that we had kind of put on the shelf. So that was the first thing is I had to change my mind as to what was possible and presuming his competence and seeing that he was in there was the first step. I had been into this method for about a year and it was hard and he would, you know, he would kind of buck, buck me a little bit, you know, it's like, I'd try to get him to come up and do a lesson and he'd want to slide under the table and he, I'd have to bring him back and all those things. But I I decided I'm going to keep trying even if it's a few days a week, 25 minutes a time, whatever, got, got into it about an, a year. And we're sitting at the table one day doing a lesson. And um, I, it was a Saturday night and I had a children's Bible. And so I, I said, well, let's read out the children's Bible. And so, you know, I just picked a little lesson. It's kind of a teach ask sort of a thing. So I read about how Jesus healed the blind man. So I read the lesson And then I said, the first thing I said was, Josiah, Jesus healed the blind man. What did Jesus do? Did he H-E-A-L heal the blind man? Or did he P-L-A-Y play with the blind man? Write that on a piece of paper, rip the paper in half, tap on heal, tap on play. I'm thinking I'm teaching him how to spell, right? So he chose heal correctly. And I said, okay, let's spell heal. Now, there are stencil boards, there are letter boards. We had an, a board on his iPad that's in alphabetical letters, A, B, C, D, F, G, in, in, in squares, right? So he presses, he presses um, G. And I'm like, oh, he's not getting it. Then he presses O. I'm like, go? He goes on to spell his first ever independent sentence, God is a good gift giver. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And that was the moment that everything changed. It was, I have to call it a cataclysmic divine supernatural moment. Unreal. Actually, I thought, am I going crazy? Did I just see that? And I started asking them questions. She'll say, yes, that, that is, God is a good gift giver, but like, how do you know that? And, and he, and he goes on to write different things, including, um, God is very capable. God is everlasting Jehovah. And I'm just like, what is happening right now? Well, I'm thinking he's being healed right at that moment. I'm I'm calling my mom. My husband was out of town on a, on a business trip and I'm calling him. I'm, I'm emailing my family and all of a sudden I'm asking him all sorts of questions you know, cause I don't know his favorite color. I don't know his favorite cartoon. I, you know, just those little things, you know? And I just am like over the, the course of the next few days, just asking him all sorts of things, getting to know my son for the, really the first time. Fast forward, Becky, he starts, you know, he, his language was a little, you know, different and kind of, uh, the cadence and the way that he expressed himself, but he started writing things that I was like, how does he, where's he getting this? How does he know this? Can he would I, write lines. Can, can I ask you just a minute? Because I just finished reading his book. And, but what I have wondered all the, uh, from the very beginning is I get the fact that he was able to start communicating. What I didn't get is how in the world did he know those words and how did he know how to spell them? Right. Do you have insight or are, should I just well, be patient and let you tell your story? Well, no, I mean, it's that's addressed in the book is as time is going on. First of all, I'm thinking that I am teaching him how to spell. Oh, and OK. I'm te- I'm thinking before this event happened, I'm thinking I'm teaching him how to spell little four letter words, five letter words, that kind of thing. Right. Yep. Come to find out he knows how to spell. And so time goes on and he starts writing things that are like these wisdom words, things like faith is believing for kites to fly when there's no wind in sight. 
man. Or faith is picture it done. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, where is he getting this? And then he would continue to write things that I'm like, I don't understand this. He's seeing things of heaven somehow. He's writing about things that are something that he's not been exposed to, you know, in any way. And one day I said, Josiah, how can you, how do you know how to spell? How do you do this? And he wrote, um, Jesus taught me the order of sounds. And I was like, he gave you hooked on phonics or something? (laughs) I mean, this sort of thing kept unfolding, Becky. And it was almost, it was, I felt like I was crazy because I'm going, no one's going to believe this. Like, how is this happening? But I know I'm not crazy. And I know this is happening, you know. And now, you know, Josiah is not crazy. (laughs) Right. Well, and he's. He started sharing things about family members in heaven that he had never met. Whoa, whoa. That people that we had never talked about. You know, they'd been gone for so many years. And these things that were being co- confirmed by, I'd run it by my mom. I'm like, what about this or that? He brought this up and she's like, oh my goodness, like that happened. That's this. And so that started happening. And then one day, I asked him if I may refer to the book, because I think this is kind of important. One day I asked him, can you fill in like the blank for me? So I'm going to give you the first line. And I said, the fate, my favorite place in heaven is because he started having all these things. I'm like, what are, what's going on? I got to see what he's going to say here. Mm -hmm. And this is when he writes his first song or his first poem. Okay. He writes, my favorite place in heaven is over peaceful waters. Peace is real. Tired souls naturally test peace. Roses are so stunning. Worship the king. Sing loud to the prize pardon who requires praise. Angels taste of his holiness, ordained great attitude of praise. Help us worship the Lord together. Please him. All you hail the king of majesty forever. Make a noise to the king on the throne. Okay, now wait. Okay, he's we're not talking, even eight. He's not even about eight an eight-year-old old boy here, right? At this point, he's not even eight. He's maybe seven and a half. Oh, my word. At this point. That's the stuff and you don't expect like, to come out of a teenager. It's It was the sort of thing where I went, how could you kind of make that up unless you've experienced something. But I had no grid for that, Becky, because I'm like, he's not had uh, an out-of-body experience. He's not had like a near-death experience. He's not, I'm looking out there on the internet going, who is this happening to? What is happening? I uh, had been brought up with some, um, you know, in some spirit-filled churches a little bit and stuff like that. But even back then, like, we didn't really understand, uh, like, the prophetic Right. We didn't really understand see, the like the seer gift yeah. or anything like that. So I'm like wandering around kind of a, a, a little blind and just kind of trying to make my way. Like what is happening here? Truly, it was disorienting to say the least. And some of the things that he would say, I'd have to go, is this even like in my religious outlook? Is this okay? I mean, is this from God? Is this, not, you know, yeah. because I'm a, I'm a minister. Yeah. I, I worked at a church for many years. Like I have grown up in the word, you know? Yeah. And so I, I, that's one thing that I would, I would say to everybody is when you're looking into things like this, of course, always test the spirits. Yeah. You need to know and discern like what's going on here. And, and, is it from God? So um, as things would come on, I'm just going, I don't understand it, but God is doing something here. That's crazy. And at that point, um, did you have a lot of exposure to other families that uh, had autistic children? Um, Did you hear of anybody else or you just felt like you were the only one in the world experiencing this? Yes, honestly, before the book came out, I did not know of any other families that were experiencing what how Josiah was experiencing things. In fact, 
you know Akiana who's the yeah. painter yeah okay Akiana she's kind of child prodigy painter she was the first one that I came up upon a book or my husband saw it in Barnes Noble or something and it was her paintings with some of her poetry he said you need to look at this and she had had experiences where she said she was brought up into the heavens mm-hmm. and you know then she like is this amazing painter and has these gifts yeah. you know and I was looking at her poetry and I'm like this is really similar in a lot of ways to Josiah's poetry or his cadence and the way that he writes so I'm like well that's probably the closest that I she's not autistic she doesn't have special needs um that was the closest I could find as to what was going on here it wasn't until after the book was released that I started getting people contacting me saying your story is our story. Wow. And that started blowing my mind. No kidding. So at what point did you come to um, confident, uh, a, a confident reality that this was real, that your son was really having these trips to heaven? I mean, in the book, you describe it, that he would tell you that Jesus comes at night and takes him to heaven. Yeah, right. Yeah. And with it, when, with what he was saying, he it was factual information, like you said. He was talking about family members. He was telling you things that he could not have known had he not talked to the person or whatever. It wasn't something that he could have, uh, you know, gone back into your mind. How, how and because it was so focused on Jesus, the throne of God, worshiping Him, and all of that, that certainly had to have given you confidence that. Okay, this is not a psychic phenomenon. Uh, This is not anything demonic or anything like that. This is truly something spiritual that is happening to our little boy uh, with God. Well, Becky, there were times that like, literally, Josiah would wake me up in the middle of the night. I'm like exhausted, (laughs) drags me out to the living room and And he starts communicating on, on his iPad and you know, he, this is a messy process. It's not like, Oh, I'm just typing away. Like it takes him a long time. It's one finger, one letter at a time. At that time, he needed a little bit of support from my arm just to be able to like, you know, move uh, around. He doesn't need any support now, but um, you know, there were times in the middle of the night that I was almost on the floor in the glory of the Lord because what he was sharing was so heavy that I'm just like, is this, what is going on? And it, he would talk about like, there's an angel in the room or he would talk about these things. And, um, you know, one night, and if I may share this, um, he, he, he said, mom, I, I'm, it's time. God wants to show you about the triune God now, mom. And I'm like, I wasn't necessarily thinking about the Trinity or anything like that, but okay. And this is when he shared in the Trinity, the father is the manager. The son is the lover of operations. Holy spirit is worker. So it's the three in one getting things done. The world was created only by three functions that went like this. The father thought it, son loved it. Holy spirit carried out the plan. That is how the Trinity works, Mom. Father, Son, Holy Spirit lack nothing. They all talk together about how things should go. Life is simple if you know he is Papa, he is healer, he is helper. And then he went on to finish and say this, man must voice, Father, what do you think? Jesus, what do you love? Spirit, what should we do about it? This is your mission. Do what the father thinks and what Jesus loves and what the spirit tells. I was almost melted into the floor. I was like, holy, holy Lord. I mean, what do you do with something like that? Tony, let's, let's just jump ahead here a little bit because Um, you could, we could spend hours talking about the things that he has revealed to you and shared with you and the revelation that has come out of this boy. Why do you think God is giving him such a voice in a unique way and not just giving him a voice that we're accustomed to? Do you have any thoughts on that at all? 
Well, certainly, Becky, you know, in the book, um, there's there's a whole lot in there about like, I'm constantly like pursuing God's healing for my son, because sure. I'm not of the persuasion that like, autism is a great gift, you know, like, we should just like, love that person had has autism. I really honestly feel that God has given gifts. And I really feel like if Josiah didn't have autism, that he would still have some of these prophetic and seeing gifts. Yeah. I feel like the enemy maybe comes against a lot of these children to stop their voices because of the gifting that God has given to them. Um, I think a lot about that Acts 2, Joel 2 generation, yeah. you know, and, and so, you know, I think, I think a lot about, about that, but um, you know, it's just, it's interesting because what, what started happening was I, I started realizing God has a purpose and a plan for each of these children and that he is going to give them gifts. <laughs> he is going to give gifts. And so I had to start researching it for myself as far as if I am here to parent this child, I need to learn more about this myself. Yeah. So I started looking into people who had the prophetic gift that, you know, had no, had no disability or people that were seers in the spirit. And I'm going, okay, wait, this is this, this is this, because, you know, there were times and you talk about like, okay, he's seeing angels and different things like that. He would also see demonic things. Sometimes uh -huh. we would be out, we would be out um, at a mall and he might tell me, like, mom, there's a demon, it's following me. And it's a demon of lust and greed that is telling people, you never have enough. You never have enough. Whoa. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, I have warfared for this child who's been woken up in the middle of the night with horrible dreams. Um, you know, th this, there is a lot to this. So, so not only can he experience things in the spirit that are really amazing and wonderful and God inspired, but the enemy will come and try to absolutely barrage him with torment. Yeah, Tanya, I find this um, very common. Uh, there are tons of children who are also spiritually sensitive. We would call them prophetic children that are not artistic. They're, they're normal in every other way. Um, and this is what we're finding, that they will have angelic dreams and angelic visitations and all the rest. And at the same time, they, they will see the demons and they will see the other side. And it's because there is only one spirit world and all of those things are in the spirit world. So parents a lot of times get confused because they too have struggled uh, with, a, with a child who uh, will wake up with night, not a nightmare, but night tears where they're actually having right. visitations in the night with demons and all, and they want to know what to do about it and, and all of that kind of thing. So this is the first time I've heard you say that. That's not even mentioned in this book that he also has. Uh, and, and so that's very uh, insightful and very common to any child, whether they're autistic or not. In fact, let me just share one of the one of the um, when I was when I was just discovering children who uh, were were autistic, and I mentioned earlier that they would hear voices in their head, and a lot of them were t telling them very demonic things to do, and telling them um, to to hit people and you know do all these terrible things, and and when they're not a Christian. They don't know what to do with that. You know, how do you handle it? And so, right. um, uh, so it's, it is one of those things that it's a very real issue. And this generation, this Joel 2 generation, Joel 2 24 generation is ultra sensitive to the spirit world. They hear things in the spirit and they experience things and they don't know that they're having a spiritual experience. They're just that sensitive. They go in and out of the spirit world quite easily. So thank you for sharing that. Go ahead. Well, and as, as, a, as a parent and as someone who tries to counsel other parents who are having similar yeah. experiences, um, most most of what I have to tell them is you have to understand what is going on. And your job is to help these children understand what's going on and to use their spiritual authority. Because these children at a young age need to understand what it means, who they are in Christ, 
what their identity is, what their worth is, what the truth is, and what a lie is, and to be able to send the devil packing. So, so getting them equipped with spiritual warfare, even if you have a child that doesn't communicate with you, um, like Josiah has opened up his communication, um, uh, you need to assume that you can talk about these things with your children and it will take some of that fear away, Yeah, that yeah. fear. And, you know, Becky, you have a great book that I've read to Josiah years ago about the, um, the closet, the monsters uh, in my closet. Really? In my closet. Really? Yes. Did that help him? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a great book because, you know, I think that there are many children that have those experiences as children, like I, like you said, autistic or not, yep. that we've been taught like, Oh, it's nothing. It's go, you know, it'll go tell it, it'll go away. There's nothing there. It's your imagination. It's not always your imagination. That's right. And with autistic children that makes this interesting Becky is that they're not prone to make stuff up interesting they don't use they're kind of black and white in their explanations of things and don't use a lot of like imaginative explanation they don't lie a lot of them they don't lie they don't manipulate that way So, so you kind of take things at face value because they just don't they just don't make that stuff up. You see what I mean? Uh, you allude, we were talking about uh, a form of this, but I want to ask you specifically, because this really fits into the conversation right here, um, about the difficulties of living in the dichotomy of seeing God do the miraculous and you believe in miracles. You're a spirit filled, born again, Christian. You believe in the prophetic. You've seen people healed. You've probably experienced healing yourself and all. And then dealing with so many of these issues because even Josiah himself in his book, he fully believes that God has told him he's going to be healed. Yeah, exactly. So how do you deal with those dichotomies? Well, I got to be honest with you. Um, Here we are. So it's been exactly seven years since the God is a good gift giver came out of Josiah. And God is a good gift giver kind of became the thesis for life. You know, God is a good gift giver. God is good. God is for us. He's not against us. You know, so so I'm thankful that that became like the underlying thesis for life. Um, However, I would say as time goes on and the years go on and the issues continue and that kind of a thing, um, the thing that can creep inside a person's heart is not always like doubt because it's like, you know what you've seen, you know what you've experienced. You can't take that away, but it's as time goes on the time you know, another year went by another year, another year. And honestly, by now I would have thought we would have seen, um, just massive amounts of, of, um, springing ahead with Josiah. And in fact, when he, you know, um, as he got older with, with puberty and and things like that, you know, a whole new set of problems, you know, came in with, with his difficulty with his body and with controlling himself and impulses and, and, you know, his level of care has increased. And, um, you know, so yeah, that's a difficult thing where you're just like, okay, God, I have seen, I know that you're, you're working here. I know like there have literally been angels in the room and Josiah will, will like put out this, this poem that just is like, whoa, why won't you touch him right now? Why won't you heal him right now? I don't know the answer to that. All I know is that it's something that I can continue to pray for and lean in for. I have a right to, because it says, do not forget any of God's benefits. He, he, he forgives your sins. He heals all. Yeah. your diseases. That's and right. autism is a big, fat, a incurable disease. But God's name is the name above all names. So I still believe that um, we can continue to lean in for his for his healing. And Becky, we um, were invited. There was a lady who had seen uh, me on Sid Roth. And she said, Hey, our story is your story. We have a camp for kids 
that are from, from age six to 36. But will you come? Will you come with Josiah? Bring your family and will you speak at our camp? So I we we all went as a family to this camp. And um, oh my gosh, it was absolutely life-changing. Here were other kids, um, quite a bit, a little bit older than Josiah, but they communicated in the same way with the same method. And they were very prophetic as well. And this is a very spirit-filled camp. And we were having chapels twice a day. And these children, these guys would go up there and they would start prophesying on their board. No way. No they would, way. it was, it would literally like, you're going, what in the heck is going on? And then they had a social with one another. And so they're each talking with one another on their boards. And there there's um, this older boy named Aaron, who basically is like a mentor to Josiah, very prophetic, very sensitive in the spirit as well. And on the last day of the camp, Josiah is out there singing and Aaron comes over and he is with his caregiver, and he gives a blessing over Josiah, writing it, you know, one letter at a time, that is like the ironic blessing. No. I mean, he literally, like, prophesied over him. Whoa. Oh, and I was just like, and Becky, he, Josiah got baptized at that camp. Water baptized. In front of these friends, yeah, in front of these friends. And we've gone back for three years in a row. Oh, and what I have seen in these places, and this is a place where, you know what? Um, it's, cha- I'll call it chaotic, chaos and order kind of all together. It's like, you know what? Kids are going to get up and walk around. They don't sit still. They don't, you know, stay in one place. They, they're they loud. But like the glory of God falls in these chapels. Amen. And there is such honor given to these children. And even the ones that aren't autistic, um, they, they, everybody has a job to do. So come on up and, and play the bongos while the worship team's going, come on up. Like they get them up on stage. And um, the last time we were there, um, the, the guys that, they were, they were all happened to be guys, and I think one girl, um, that communicates in the same way as Josiah, they, she, the, the lady who runs it, she said, do you have, what's your message to the people out here? Here's your chance, you know? And she lined them all up to be able to say, I mean, it was like they preached a gospel message and there were, there were camp counselors that were there that came in there, not believing in God and left going, if, I mean, this doesn't make sense. I see what they look like. But what they are showing and what they are telling, like, there's got to be a God. Oh, my. That's amazing. There's got to be a God. And it's just amazing to see how God not only touches those kids and those young adults that have various special needs, but it's the ones that come to work with them that he just grabs their hearts and, and just speaks to them. Why is this happening to this population? You know what? I look at the the scripture and it talks about how there's a big feast and it's like, you know what? Go out and invite people to the big feast. Tell them, come on in to the big feast. Oh, you know, I got things to do. I got crops. I got, I got to wash my hair. I got a wedding to go to, you know, all these things. And then they come back and they're, oh, you know, can't come. And Jesus says, go out and get the lame, go out and get the poor, go out and get the blind. I really believe that they're the ones that are like attending to his call. Wow. That's amazing. Is this camp open? I mean, I know that there is going to be people listening to this, Tani. They're going to repeat what you said. You're telling my story. There's going to be people who say, I want my kid to go to this camp. Now, it's not your camp, but is this something that people are welcome to to go to? Is it open to the public or how does this work? Yeah. It's called, it, it, they actually have a church for special needs in um, Waukegan, Illinois. Oh. And, um, so it's usually like uh, kids around that area oh. and that go to their church usually go to this camp, but I'm sure that they are open to other people coming, you know, as well as they find fit. Yeah. So it's what? Waukegan Foursquare Church, I believe is the name of the church. 
Um, so when when Josiah leaves that camp, yeah. what's it like for him? I mean, what what's what is he like when he leaves this camp and he's that been he, around all so, these other kids? It's so amazing because every single time that we've gone there, we have had to battle to get there. I mean, battle. Like where we're almost ready to turn the car around because it's like he is just beside himself or, you know, we have this seven hour trip in front of us and it's like, it's just not working out. This isn't going to work. How are we going to do this? I mean, it's just a battle to get there. Literally, like we're fighting to get there. And it's like he has about a day where he has a hard time just getting calmed down, you know, and then it's like like a a bud opening in bloom all of a sudden it's like you look and this child who wouldn't leave your side and is like holding like this breaks three free like a calf out of the stall running across the field or just has this like relaxed attitude where it's like he is fully accepted fully loved fully um, admired even, you know, each of these kids, they have talent shows and these kids have the quirkiest talents, you know, like, like they can, you know, what day is it on May 25th, 1929 was what day of the week, you know, oh, Wednesday, you know, I mean, but, you know, they all get applauded for it. It's like, yes. And they're just showered with love. And when he, by the time he leaves there, it's just like, we have seen something that in him that is an openness that we actually don't see all year round i have had a question um and you're the only one that i know that i can ask it to and would have any semblance of an answer and i have often wondered because i've seen so many miraculous things happen uh with uh with people uh this this group of autistic children who are extremely prophetic but they they have no voice they can't speak out loud have you ever heard of them being filled with the holy spirit like you and i think of it and when they pray they can actually pray in tongues out loud like you and i has that ever happened to anybody that you know not not that i know of as far as like being able to speak it out yeah. but what I have seen with Josiah and one other person is being able to interpret it when someone else speaks. Really? Interpret the prayer of tongues. No kidding. Did yeah. you see that at camp or have you seen I, Josiah do that? I saw Josiah do that and I've seen one other person do that. Oh my, that's amazing. That's really amazing. And it's the kind of language that is just like, you know, it's not, it's not typical. I mean, it's this beautiful, like, like, whoa, that's what's being said. What? Like, it's a prayer that's high, you know, higher than our typical language. And it's just like, whoa, and, and they can translate it. Tony, what in closing, because we've got to wind up here. Um, This has really been fascinating. What would you say to the parents, or maybe you said it a few minutes ago, but what would you say to the parents of other autistic children um, of, uh, of their spiritual journey? Of course, the first word is you need Jesus, you know, and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at your book here. This is, I, I almost got done with it. I read it again this week because I wanted to refresh my memory on everything, but um, way towards the end, um, Josiah is talking to you with his little tablet and he says, you, you've said something to him, uh, that is speaking about his healing and he's writing to you. And he says, so you be, you broke down and you began to cry. And, uh, he says, so your rich sobs show that you break to say, I don't see Jesus working this out. It looks so bad right now. My son is so autistic. He is richly worse than he has ever been when it comes to his real self showing through. And then he says, right? Like, right, mom? Yeah. And you wiped your eyes and said, what am I supposed to say, Josiah? And then he writes some more. Holy tears, though you cry. Holy tears to say what you believe has to become true or it is only half true. Only delight in me. And I will do, this is now he's speaking as the Holy Spirit. I will do all that I have said to you. 
He is walking out of autism, Tawny. I am the first and the last, so he will speak like a real boy, not on a machine like the lady you saw picturing that maybe he could do that with his own eyes one day. So this is your hope. You yeah. I, you hang on to this. Josiah hangs on to this. And, and this may not be what you want to say to parents, but but there is a hope. And mm. what, what would you say in closing to the parents of autistic children? Yeah. You know, there's so much that is in your face on the outside. It looks, the circumstances look so bad sometimes. They really do. But if you can just open up and look behind that, there are children Becky, I I have I have counseled parents who say, I'm so glad that your child is able to communicate. You are, you're able to know that he is actually there and he's actually in there. And I have a child who's in a vegetative state, or I have a child that needs, you know, 24 hour a day care, can't see, can't talk, whatever. And I say, speak to their spirits, speak to them, talk to them, sing to them, sing over them. They are in there. They are in there. There is, you know, there are things, there are places that God is going to touch in that child that you will never be able to touch. And so trust that God is reaching places that you can never reach. But at the same time, there is a responsibility that God leaves with us as parents. And it is to bring up our children in the Lord, to direct and guide them speak over them, talk to them about Jesus, talk to them. Even if you don't think that they can understand it, they'll understand it. Talk to them about Jesus, share with them about Jesus. So many of them are just ripe. They love Jesus already. They're already, you know, drawn to Jesus. So I think that there's a spiritual, that there, there's some of that stuff that we have to take the reins on to be able to instill that in our children that have special needs. Oftentimes they don't, these kids don't get to go to church, you know, 80 to 90% of, of families that have special needs kids don't go to church. We as parents have to build ourselves up in knowledge and the understanding of God. Many of us, and you know, it's talked about in the book, many of us moms, dads too, have had similar experiences on this journey. And it's that our lives get radically changed and we we learn the father heart of god a lot of our religious boxes are deconstructed we're having to fall in love with jesus ourselves we're having to wrestle through a lot of questions that we have so that we can then pour into our children and see our children in a way that god sees them and i have to say that it is so imperative right now. Uh, a lot of the the work that's done for and thank you, Lord, for for parents and t- for teachers and therapists and all these people that work with these children and young adults. They are so amazing. But one of the things that I've learned is that a lot of the teachers and therapists and things like that that have read our book say they treat these kids differently than they used to. They speak to them differently. They go, hey, it made me realize they have dreams. They have interests. They have desires. It's not about just getting the activity done or checking something off the list or making sure they can wash their hands. What do they love? God has put something in their hearts. Yeah. They have a soul. They have a rich inner life. We've got to cultivate that from the point of their spiritual gifts and their their strengths. They live their life trying to deal with the weaknesses that they have. Mm-hmm. We have to build them up through their strengths and through their interests and through their God-given abilities and then move out the fear push out the fear with the perfect love of God and help them understand their worth, help them understand that they are greatly loved just as they are right now and help them understand that the Lord has a good purpose and plan for their lives because depression will try to come in and overtake them. Anxiety will try to come in and overtake them and the family stress and divorce and every kind of thing we have to as parents and grandparents 
stand up and say, I will not allow that to happen. Not on my watch, not in my house. And that takes a huge spiritual investment in yourself Mm -hmm. and in your marriage and in your relationships with others, other Christians that can help you. Uh, In closing, if parents wanted to get in touch with you, Tawny, do you have a public forum? I know you have a Facebook page called Josiah's Fire that they can uh, follow, like, whatever it is. Um, And and what what would you say to them uh, if if they're looking for more one-on-one? The very best place, the very best place to go is Josiah's Fire. That's the most active is our Josiah's Fire Facebook page, Instant Message Me or whatever. And um, a lot of times, especially if there are people that are having very similar experiences to us, um, I am really interested and happy to, to get on a phone call with them and kind of talk about that, talk through that, because I find that um, there are a whole lot of people that are like, okay, now the spiritual side of this, there's just not a lot out there to help them. And I'm happy to help guide them. And I, I still have a lot of questions myself, yeah. but I feel like I've gotten a little farther down the road to, to see like, okay, there, there's a lot of patterns that are very similar happening here. So we need to be aware God's doing something. The yeah. church needs to be aware of it too. And the, and your, you know, your cohort um, in, in absolutely ministry yeah absolutely we'll definitely get this um message out to as many children's ministers and parents on facebook and we've got a lot of av- avenues youtube and, and various things we definitely want people to be able to hear this tawny let's just close real quick would you just quickly say a prayer for the families uh, yeah. that are dealing with this right now and absolutely we'll just close this out yeah Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to boast in you. God, I only want our story to bring you glory. That's it. And God, I pray for each and every person that might be dialing in here. I pray, Lord, that you extend a rope of hope. It says that you are the God of hope. And this isn't a matter of coping with all of these difficulties, especially with autism and and every kind of special need. There's so much coping out there. You don't even talk like that. You are the God of hope. You are the God of faith. And so, God, I pray that every limitation that has been put over these children and over these families, every barrier that's been put up by the enemy would be stripped away. And I pray that this Joel 2 generation would have a voice, that they would be able to speak, that they would be able to communicate, that they would be able to open up. And we thank you and praise you that the the gates of hell will not prevail against this generation or these families in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Father, I just release in the name of Jesus a, a holy army. There are hidden ones out there that have been conspired against by the enemy. And we say in the name of Jesus Christ, they will be revealed. There is nothing hidden that won't be revealed in the name of Jesus. And I thank you and praise you that for the glory of the Father and for the harvest in this time, that there will be the most unusual cases, the most unusual miracles, the most unusual voices that point exactly to Jesus Christ and say, look at the king. Look at the king. Don't look at me. Don't look at the circumstances. Look at the king. So we we pray for that, Lord. We thank you and praise you that this is the time and this is the place and embolden these ministers, Lord, in, in kids ministry, in supernatural ministry, to be able to do this work and train up those in this field. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tawny, this has been fantastic. Thank oh. you for taking time. Thank you for watching our show today. If you would like to know more about Kids in Ministry International and how we can help your children grow spiritually or anything to help your kids ministry, we invite you to visit our website and online store or like us on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, God bless.